Well, we can start now with the next video. In the first video, we saw the description of the beam geometry, the creation of the different material properties and cross sections, and then it's time to work with the conditions on the geometry. So the boundary conditions are for supports and then the loading conditions. If we take back the statement of the problem again, we can see the different conditions over our geometry. In our case, we have three different types of loads. We have uh, the permanent load that it's uh, uniform distributed along the specimen and its value is, is a thousand newtons meter. Then we have another uniform distributed load uh, of 10,000 newton meter, but in that case is a variable load. And then we have two point loads applied at the mid span cross section with a value of 50,000 newtons each. For the boundary conditions, we have two uh, rolls at the beam end, and then we have a fixed support at the mid uh, the midpoint of the beam. Now we have the material properties and the cross section well defined, so we can move to the on the, we can move on and define the conditions of our geometry. The conditions, as we said, are going to be two boundary conditions where we define the support and then loads. So we are going to start with the boundary conditions. If we click on the last uh, row on the toolbox, we can attach a support to our geometry. The name of the support can be for the first one, uh, mid span uh, or mid support, sorry. Then we have to create a support set. In that case, we can create only one support set. We don't need to create different support sets for each uh, support, so we can use always the same. As we said, as we did for the other options, we need to target our uh, element type or geometry type. In that case, we want to support points, so or vertex. So we have to select the vertex. As we have two spans, we have two different vertex at the same point. So we need to see here uh, one vertex from the left span and the other vertex for the right span. This support we want to be completely fixed, so we have to mark all the directions. Then we can add the supports at the end of beam. As I said, the same support set, again points, and now we can select the two end beams. So we can see here one coming from the right span and the other one from the left span. In that case, we want to release the X direction to avoid possible axial uh, loads or axial forces due to the deformation of the beam. Now we have defined the boundary conditions. To define the loads or the applied loads uh, to the model, we need to have a specific consideration. As I said before, all the conditions are applied over the geometry, not uh, over the mesh. But when we have a point load in our model, what we want is that this load is applied on a node in the final mesh. Then what we need to do first uh, is to get uh, a node in the final mesh where we want to apply the, 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 the load. So to do that, what we are going to do is first create a vertex that we are going to call left B. And we are going to apply to create this vertex at the mid span point. Well, we do the same for the right span. right B and this is 19.5500. So we now have two vertex at the mid span, uh, at the mid cross section span for each span. That uh, is where we want the applied load. But uh, what we want is to have this vertex 
embedded into our line span. So now we have four geometries, but these geometries are not uh, connected at all. So if we mesh this left span or the right span as well, we we are not uh, assuring that we get a node and or mesh in this at this point. So what we need to do then is imprint this point into the initial geometry. So we need to select the edge and then we select the tool that we want to imprint or into our uh, edge. The imprinting direction doesn't matter at all because we are uh, we have the point over the line, so it doesn't matter which direction we use for the imprinting. In this case, we select, we left selected imprint, and then we can keep or not the, the the vertex. In that case, we don't need to keep them; it keep it, so we can proceed. So. As you can see here, when the, the, the left uh, point has disappeared and now it is fully embedded on our uh, left span. So if we mesh this left span, we are going to have for sure a, a node uh, in the mesh at this point. So now we could uh, apply the load at this point. We are going to do first the same for the rest, right span. Well, we have already both uh, points embedded in our geometries. So we, now we can proceed with the load creation. A name, for example, we can start for the permanent. We are going to create a separate load case for each load because we are going to use the different load cases in the nonlinear analysis and we want to use the same model later on. Okay. Tar again, we have to select the target type and which kind of force we want to apply. In this case, as we are going to apply the permanent load always on the, on the full length, we can select both spans at the same time. If you remember, we said that the direction of the load must be Y, so be careful with that and don't get confused. Yes, so you can see a graphical interpretation of the load applied over our geometry. We can now define the variable. We are going to define two different variables, left variable uniform. So copy, we create a load case with the same name. The target is a line distributed because we are choosing the uniform. As you can see here, we have left span, but we have now two edges because when we, when we um, imprinted the point, uh, we divided the line into different lines, but the, the, the main line is left span, so it's considered one final line. The value is 10,000 newtons again in the y direction. Now we proceed with the right span, right variable uniform. So we create a new load set. As I said, the load set creations is because we are going to need them uh, later on in the nonlinear analysis. But right now we could have just one load set. Okay, now we can proceed with the point loads, variable point. and we select and the value is minus 50,000. Then finally the last one, right variable point, we create a load set, 
point. Yeah, we select. Oops. Yeah. Minus ten thousand. Yes. And on the way again. We click OK. We have already done all the loads applied over our geometry and its graphical uh, interpretation until here with this video. So what we have seen is the essentially the creation or the development of the model. We define the geometry, we assign, uh, we created material properties, cross-section properties. Then we uh, define the conditions of our geometry by defining the boundary conditions or supports, the loads, and then we, can, we are ready to proceed with the meshing and the computation of the, of the results. But that's something that we are going to see in the next video. Thank you. See you.